Hello, my name's Rachel and I absolutely love stationery. If like me, you can't walk past Paper Chase or other stationery shops without going in, scouring the shelves for new packs of pens, pencils, rubbers, and the most coveted of coveted all items, a new beautiful notebook. Well, if that's you, then this session today on the Virtual Village Hall is right up your street. Because I'm gonna be showing you how to make these concertina artists books you need just a few items and i'm gonna talk you through those now so all you need is three pieces of pre-printed or colored paper they're a4 size and um, this is just printer paper weight you don't need anything heavier than that you'll also need um, a6 piece of card in whatever color or print, print you want you'll also need scissors or a craft knife and a craft board you'll need some glue you'll need some thread sort of like a baker's twine or maybe maybe a nice sort of garden string or even a colorful ribbon and that needs to be about 65 centimeters long you'll also need something like this just to make a hole in the book in the front cover so that you can attach that twine We've got lots of sticking, lots of folding, lots of cutting to do this morning. But first of all, I just want to show you how I've made these beautiful uh, pre-printed papers. It's made using something called a jelly plate. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop you down um, and just show you how to do it. So this part isn't actually in the video notes. There are no um, no equipment for this, but I thought I'd like to show you anyway. Uh, this is the jelly plate. Um, it's spelled G-E-L-L-I. It's almost like you've put too much gelatine in jelly, although it doesn't contain any animal products. You can buy them, but you can also make them. If you go to my website, iprintedthat.com, then jelly printing is the feature technique print making technique this month um, and I've got a little tutorial on there to show you how to make it but this is how you use it so you need your jelly plate a roller and also some water-based paints so you just start by applying the paint using the roller to spread nice and evenly that paint Then this is just one way of doing it. You can apply leaves and feathers. Onto the paint. Place your paper on top, smooth over with the palm of your hands, all over the back, making contact with the leaves, the feathers and the gel plate and pull it off just to the end, take off your feathers and leaves. Carefully put it back down to pick up those prints. And that's how I made the paper that I'm going to be using this morning. So you can have a go yourself too another time, but let us get started on making our concertina art books. I've got my paper here and I'm going to Fold it in half. You need to do this widthways and lengthways. Make sure you get it as accurate as possible. We can trim afterwards, um, but that's this saves us a little bit of work now, just making sure we get really good straight edges. 
Now, rather than folding it and folding it and folding it, I always open it, up, open it up because even just those small kind of millimeters in the folds is gonna put your book out. So unfold and then we're gonna fold again. So we're going to lengthways, just matching up the corners. So now we're going to fold into the middle, trying best to keep those lines straight. And that's our first piece of paper done. So we're going to do that for our other two pieces of paper. If you're just joining us this morning, then please pop on the comments, say hi, let us know where you're watching from, or maybe you're joining in. You know, if you're joining in with the session this morning. It's always lovely to have your comments, know that you're that you're out there watching today. And we are making concertina artist notebooks, which are great for giving away as presents. Uh, fill them with little quotes, little doodles, poems, or keep them for yourself. You can even use them for shopping lists. You'll be the envy of all the other shoppers. So this is the second piece of paper that we're folding, second out of three. Making sure those lines are nice and straight. And then onto our last piece of paper. You can make these books in different sizes. I quite like the tiny ones because they can just sort of fit neatly into a bag, into a pocket. But by all means, you know, use a quarter of the paper to make your books or bigger if you like. You're just gonna need more pieces of paper. Okay, that's our three pieces of paper folded. Now we need to cut them. You can use scissors for this, but I'm going to use a craft board. And craft knife. And my ruler. I tend to cut on this side just because you don't see the lines so well on the printed side. And again, I cut individually rather than cutting them all on top of each other because there's a good chance that you might end up getting your paper slightly out of alignment. So we're just taking our time nice and slowly try and be as accurate as possible with those cuts i think we want to take our time and be a bit slow at the moment because it's so hot any top tips for cooling down today would be most appreciated it's definitely a, a fringe off my face day today Does mean that the uh, glue is going to dry quickly, the paint dried quickly when I painted these up this morning. So 
it has some benefits. These Concertina artist books are also a great stash buster if you've got um, prints or drawings or paintings that you've done before you can turn them into these little books or even if you've sort of got uh, sample prints maybe you've got sort of seconds ones that didn't go quite right because you don't have to use the whole piece of paper what you can do is cut yourself just a small cardboard template and then just pick out the bits that you that you really like you don't have to use the whole sheet so that's a way of using up paper that you might have put in the drawer waiting for another day waiting for something a crafter to, to appear that uses them up so maybe today is that day okay we're going to add to our pile And also I think when you cut them up smaller, you end up seeing details that you might have missed previously. So that one that I've just put on there with the uh, this gorgeous fern where it's picked up other parts of the ink. I love that. Okay, one more paper to go. So if you're using scissors, this might take you a little bit longer, um, but you can always come back later and watch this video again. They're all saved on the Virtual Village Hall Facebook page. So you can watch it again, you can pause if you need to, you can rewind. And don't forget you can always share the video too. So if you've got crafty friends or if you're in any craft Facebook groups and you want to share this with people, then please do just hit the share button. Okay, that's all of our papers cut up. Now we need to fold each one. I said there was a lot of folding and cutting. So all you're doing is folding it um, widthwise and if you've cut accurately enough they should match so it's just going to look like a little card. So carry on folding all of your papers up and you might like to start thinking as well about what sort of sequence you want to put these in. So I had two mainly yellow pieces and then one pink piece of paper. So I might sort of intersperse the pink in with the yellow when I make my book up. I'm just gonna lay them down so I can see what's what. Oh, 
that's a really another really nice bit of print there it's like a cloud with a leaf over it prints just get better and better and what I love about the jelly printing is that you don't even if you don't feel that you're artistic um, that doesn't matter because you really never quite know how it's going to come out and nature does a lot of the work for you it's such an experimental print technique to to try out and as I said if you want to find out a tutorial for making up a jelly plate or a gel plate then just head on to my website iprintedthat.com and you'll be able to make one up Yeah, I think that's nearly the second piece of paper done and then that's my last, that's that last sheet that I'm just about to head on to. mindful little job to do really you're just kind of not necessarily focusing on much apart from matching up the sides you can just just let your mind go that's the final one folded so I said I'm just going to maybe mix some of these up a bit in ready mint for sticking together. Now we get our glue, you can use, uh, PVA is best for this, but you can also use a glue stick. And you just want to start by opening up your first one and you're going to glue the right hand side. Make sure you get into all the corners, all over the middle. Take your next piece of paper and you're going to glue the left hand side with the wrong side facing down onto the piece that you've just glued. So if you need to, you should just still be able to move the paper. Oh, I think mine's really really stuck. <laughs> to get those lines correct. Make sure it's all stuck down. And then you're gonna flip it over and then do exactly the same. Try as best you can to match up all the straight edges.
get another nice slow job for this kind of weather. So we're just gluing and turning it over. I can see I've cut out I've cut out the line slightly there, but that's fine if that happens to you as well. We can just trim it the end. You'll see your, your concertina getting longer and longer. Actually add more to it, a few more to go. Love this pink, this neon pink and yellow. It's making me feel very summery. It's got a bit of a 70s vibe to it with the leaf prints as well. What do you think? Let me know what colours you're using today. If you've uh, printed your own paper or if you've got a stash that you think this would be perfect for. So because the way my camera is set up, I can't see your comments today, but what I will do, I will please, you know, feel free to comment. Don't let that stop you. I'll go through afterwards and I'll answer any questions that you have or reply to any comments that you want to make today. book's now off the table so I'm just going to fold it in slightly. Take some more water please everyone stay hydrated today. I know this isn't a strenuous activity but even so keep drinking that water. So 
such a nice surprise when you turn it over and see those all those colours together, those different prints and the way they react with each other. You can be quite meticulous if you want, you know, and lay your um, lay it out in one big sort of continuous uh, pattern, or you can do what I'm doing and just really go in ad hoc. It makes for interesting viewing as well. And sometimes they're nice, you don't even have to write in them. Sometimes they're nice just to sort of pictures and beautiful prints and you just every time you look at it you see something new okay And if you'd like to do this all over again with me, then you can join me um, and other fellow crafters on Zoom tomorrow. Um, so I do something called Print Club um, at the end of towards the end of every month. And tomorrow we're going to be making um, printing and making up these concertina art books. So there's um, a chance at one at eleven o'clock on Zoom, and then one at six p.m. So to find out more details, just go to my website iprintedat.com and you can sign up and then you can join us and do some more, make some more concertina art books okay last two Okay, so that's a uh, book all glued. So to grab a couple of bits of pearl on the floor. And before we put the cover on, we're just going to fold it up so we can see what it looks like. And all you're doing is just folding it in on itself onto those folds. still a little bit well actually it's just slightly sticking together so now I just need to make the cover for it so I quite like having a really plain cover because then it's such a surprise when you open it up and see all the gorgeous prints but feel free to go with whatever you want um, I think I'm going to stick with my summary theme and I'm going to go for a plain colour, a plain cover um, without any detail, but nice and bright. 
so I've got that piece that template that I was talking about earlier just cut out of card and I'm going to draw on the reverse side so that I don't get any pencil marks on my actual coloured part so drawing round the template and I need two of these ones for the front and one for the back So I'm not going to work. Let's see. And then cut that. So just to say that again, this is the card for the front and the backs of our book. Cut a cardboard template the same size as each one of the pages and I've just drawn on the back of my colour card and I'm cutting it out. So a bit more folding. And the final bit of sticking. So just like we did with the each page. Apply the glue. Stick on the cover. And there you have your concertina art book. Now I'd allow that um, to dry after we've done the next bit. So when, when, after we've done the next bit, open it out completely and allow it to dry. Um, but I'm just going to use, so that is my front. So I'm just going to use this tool or you can use something similar just to make a hole through the front cover and then I'm going to thread my twine through So that can be wrapped up and tied in a little bow for your for your secrets, <laughs> for your secret shopping lists. Okay, so last thing you can do if you want, you can personalise these. And I've just got some letter stamps. Somewhere. 
So I'm going to test one. So that's the front. And this is the back. So now I'm just going to open that all out and leave that to dry and then it can all be refolded and used. So I hope that that has inspired you to have a rummage in your craft book box. Um, maybe do some prints of your own and make them into these gorgeous concertina artist books books thank you so much for joining me today um i look forward to seeing you another time stay cool and happy printing bye for now